flap, 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 flap. Hello, summoners. Whew! Can you believe it's summer already? Time sure is flying by. I, Bay, have once again gathered some exciting news to share with all you summoners. It's a busy month for your favorite messenger owl. And I've been preparing not one, but two separate episodes of Bay Channel. Today's episode will focus on the August update, while the next episode in mid-August will focus on the September update and Choose Your Legends Round 4. With that bit of housekeeping out of the way, get ready for the latest information on the Fire Emblem Heroes game. It's time for Bay Channel. Let's get started. Oh, there's no shortage of updates to share. Let's start here. Avast, me hearties! What do I spy on the horizon? Why, it's a scurvy crew of pirate-themed special heroes! Let's take a look at them one by one. Hi, the shipless pirates was my crew. Everyone knew us, but it was Benyon who truly feared us. First up is Tibarn from the Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn game. In retaliation for Benyon's actions, Tibarn attacked Bayork trading ships from the skies, earning his crew the moniker of the Shipless Pirates. Where's the loot? He certainly looks the part, doesn't he? The sight of him swooping in from the sky must be intimidating indeed. A pirate festival? You do know I'm a real pirate, don't you? Here's Bridget from the Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War game. I'm already there. What's a pirate festival without a real pirate? Before meeting Sigurd and friends, Bridget was a bona fide buccaneer in charge of a motley crew of pirates. Her skill with the bow is leagues above any poor privateers. Saving a life is more satisfying than raking in even the biggest plunder. from the Fire Emblem The Binding Blade game. This former merchant captain isn't exactly a plunderer by choice. After a war sunk his legitimate business prospects, he reluctantly took up piracy for a time to make ends meet. Word is he can navigate the ocean with the best of them. What's the plan? I wonder if he'd let me stow away on his ship for a nice cruise one day. I need to start over. Earn myself an honest living. Here's Daros from the Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light game. He's a fisherman whose circumstances led to a life of piracy until he encountered Marth and swore off swashbuckling for good. For the Pirate Festival, he's back on cleaning duty. Show us landlubbers how to swab the deck! Let's take to the high seas. But I cannot swim. And finally, the pirating pair of Princess Veronica from Fire Emblem Heroes and Prince Xander from the Fire Emblem Fates games. When he saw Veronica all by her lonesome during the festivities, Xander suggested they chart the waters of the pirate life together. Veronica may try to hide it, but it's obvious she's having a blast with Xander at her side. And really, who can blame her? Tibarn, Bridget, Geese, and the pair of Veronica and Xander will appear in the Special Heroes Pirates Pride summoning event starting on August 7th. You can also play the upcoming Tempest Trials Plus event to make that sea dog Daros your ally. I have to admit, I am a teeny bit jealous that Xander found a partner in piracy. But I did already promise Chief Phoenix that I'd sail with his crew, the Order of Yoho Heroes. So my talons are tied. Well, there's always next year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, moving on. It's time for info on the next version update. Are the changes that are in store. Let's go over them together. First up, we're improving the portrait display for devices with taller screens. 
Some of you summoners may notice a bit of empty space at the top and bottom of your screen as you play the game. Well, now this space will be used to place useful information right at your fingertips. On the home screen, for example, you can easily track how many divine codes you have. On battle maps, you can see the current turn. This is great for staying on top of skills that activate during certain turns and can help shape your strategy on maps that have turn limits. In resonant battles, you'll be able to see your inventory of items liberated from defeated thieves at a glance. Oh, and speaking of resonant battles, if you tap on the Edit Teams button before deploying, a filter for that season's bonus titles will automatically be applied. Next up, new maps are coming to the arena. New maps will be making an appearance with the arena season starting on August 11th. These maps may challenge you to rethink your strategy. So stay on your toes and adapt to the new challenges as they roll out. The plan is to mix these maps in over time. Last, but certainly not least, there are some changes coming to the summoning pool. Certain five-star heroes will no longer appear in new heroes or special heroes summoning events. This change applies to summoning events that begin on or after August 2nd. The heroes affected by this change are the ones who appeared in the New Heroes Children of Fate summoning event held in December of 2017, through the New Heroes Arrival of the Brave summoning event held in August of 2018. But don't fret just yet, because these heroes will appear in weekly revival summoning events starting on August 2nd. These weekly revivals will be interspersed in the rotation of existing events that has been running since last year. And the Chief has authorized me to disclose something special. These weekly revivals will include Choose Your Legends Round 2 winners Hector, Celica, Ephraim, and Veronica. And guess what? These four heroes will each receive a new weapon to refine in September. No I hear they pack waste. quite a punch. I can't wait! Finally, we have... Hooray! I'm throwing another summer celebration this year. Fire Emblem Heroes celebrates its three and a half year anniversary on August 2nd, and I couldn't be more excited. To thank all of you summoners for your passion and support, we've prepared a whole host of events to enjoy. I'll highlight a few now. First up, we have a pair of Phase Summer Celebration login bonuses. You can get two orbs each day for a total of up to 20 orbs just from login bonus one. On top of all those orbs, you can also get up to 60 of each kind of dragon flower and up to 60 heroic grails from login bonus two. Next up, Phase Summer Celebration Reward Maps. Special maps will be added once a day for 10 consecutive days. This time, the top ranked heroes from each of the categories in the Voting Jubilee event held in April will appear as your foes. You can choose either normal or hard difficulties for each map. And you can earn up to 20 orbs by completing these maps on both difficulties. We'll also have daily Bound Hero Battle Revivals. Bound Hero Battles that took place between December of 2018 and December of 2019 are coming back. We've also prepared Bound Hero Battle Revival Quests with rewards including orbs, so these battles are well worth your time, even if you've cleared them before. Still looking for more? Well, have some Phase Summer Celebration Quests. Clear quests during the active period to earn rewards such as orbs and divine codes. The total number of orbs available from the events I've introduced so far is a whopping 55! But that's not all, because there will also be quite a few opportunities to summon heroes. To start, there will be a series of daily summoning focus revivals. Summoning focus events held between December of 2018 and December of 2019 are coming back daily. 
These daily summoning focus revivals will take place alongside the daily bound hero battle revivals that I introduced earlier. There are 13 in total. Don't forget that you can summon once on each event without using any orbs. There's also going to be a Hero Fest summoning event. It's been a while since we've held one of these, huh? I wonder who will represent each color this time. Oh, it looks like Bernadetta is colorless. She placed third in the women's division of the Choose Your Legends Round 4 event earlier this year, so she is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Green goes to Nagi. She radiates a sense of mystery and has a mature charm. The duo of Ephraim and Leon are blue. These two have stuck together through thick and thin, and this hero fest is no exception. And finally, for red, we have... <gasps> oh my! It's so this! Looking as mythical as ever. It's been just over a year since the Fire Emblem Three Houses game was released. Uh, don't tell her I said it, but I think she was getting a little lonely. While I have you here, let's do a quick recap on how Hero Fests work. In a Hero Fest, the five-star hero initial appearance rate is set to 8%, which includes a five-star focus hero initial appearance rate of 5%. And remember, your first summon won't cost any orbs. Please note that the summoning pool changes mentioned earlier in the episode will take effect from this Hero Fest onward. And on top of all that, we're giving away five first summon tickets for this Hero Fest. Even better, you can get all five tickets in one fell swoop just by logging in once while the Hero Fest is active. It couldn't be any easier. I've also got some good news for you bright-eyed summoners out there who just started playing. The lineup for the current Starter Support Hero Fest event will be replaced with the lineup for this Hero Fest. That means that the Starter Support Hero Fest will include both a duo hero and a mythic hero. This is a great time to invite your friends who haven't started the game to jump in and play. That about covers it for my summer celebration. But why not go over the total available rewards one last time? They include... 60 of each type of dragon flower, 160 heroic grails, 10 sacred coins, 120 divine codes, part one, 19 free summons, and last but not least, up to 55 orbs. Make sure to log in, play, and collect them all. Whew, well, that's all for today, summoners. I hope you're as excited for the summer celebration as I am. Oh, and be sure to stay tuned for the upcoming episode in mid-August. Now, if you'll excuse me.